This is the fourth video in a series of videos about this greenhouse I built incorporating a shipping container. Now, if you haven't watched the other three videos, you might want to go back and visit them so you can understand what we're talking about. The first one is about an overview and a tour of the greenhouse. The second one was about planning and budgeting. The third one was about the geothermal systems, the systems uh, that we put under the ground and the earth tube in the back for heating and cooling the greenhouse. Now what I want to do today is just continue from the third video and explain to you some of the questions or answer some of the questions that we've received and move on in the build. One of the questions I was asked was, well, how do you insulate the shipping container? Well, there's several different trains of thought on that. One is that you wrap the whole thing in a lot of insulation and another one is you don't wrap any at all. Well, if you didn't put any insulation at all, what happened is, is that the sun would come through the greenhouse into the shipping container and then this, all this dirt back here, including the shipping container, could be a heat sink because it's on the north side. Well, that's all fine and good except when you go to use this earth tube, you're going to have a transfer back and forth of temperature in the, in the dirt because this is always going to get heat and cold uh, one way or another. So what we decided to do was insulate all the way to the bottom and all the way on top. So we ran that two inches of blue board all the way down and all the way around it and on the ends. We wanted to isolate this dirt, the temperature of the dirt, from the, green, or from the shipping container and what was going on in the shipping container. That way the earth tube would stay the same temperature as the earth back here was in a constant. And it had about six foot of dirt on top of it and then of course back we went clear 16 feet this way so there was 200 yards of dirt back there. So this is working really well. It stays around 42, 45 degrees year round. And you'll remember from the last video that we had a couple of systems in place where we could draw air straight into the earth tube or we could block off the end of that and recirculate the air that was going into the greenhouse from the earth tube and because um, you definitely don't want that arctic air going into all this dirt in the winter time and just charging up cold okay so we want to recharge it with the ambient temperature that's in the greenhouse and it stayed about 45 degrees all last winter it worked really well so the next step I did after I put that blue board on there is I wrapped it with tarps and as I went down to the local trucking company and asked them to keep their eyes open up for some good used tarps. Uh, we didn't need the, the rings on them or anything like that. They could have a, a rip on the side or something and we found some really good heavy rubber tarps and we just wrapped that in there. And where it overlapped we just went down to Costco and bought some cheaper tarps and just threw those out over the top of it. So we had a lot of moisture barrier. Now it's, it's waterproof and it's painted, but I think that's a good inexpensive uh, precaution. We built up dirt here and remember from the last video, we put footings here so we could build a center block wall, a retaining wall, so the dirt would come up like this. We had a place to walk here. And then underneath grade here, we went down about two feet and we put a footing here and then we put posts in there, steel posts, and then we put these tires on there and built that tire wall up, which we would not do again. It was just too time consuming and uh, definitely too hard on my old body. Anyway, uh, I would have used cinder blocks or something else. Uh, in that the next time. We built that up so we had the, came up the dirt about halfway here and then that just came down underneath the tire walls and we had a place to walk here. Now after all that was done the next step would be to put in the footings and the foundations. It's pretty standard construction stuff. We're going to put a footing and a foundation around this for that to sit on. We also want it below frost line. We we're going to have this two foot below grade down here. The only two places where we were going to have any weight on the footings and foundation was in the two corners of the greenhouse. One 
uh, was actually 12 foot from the footing all the way up to the top of the shipping container. On the west side, we staggered the cinder blocks and built that up so we could put more dirt around the corner of the, of the greenhouse. And then we were going to build dirt up around the edge of this the other two feet. So all of that four foot would be underground. After we built the footings, we insulated all the way around this thing. So the whole thing was wrapped in, in two inch blue board. You remember from the last video, a friend of mine gave me 12 pallets of brand new cinder blocks, but they were all mixed up. Most of them were half blocks and a lot of them were uh, bind beam blocks or there were special decorative blocks, different kinds of colors. So it was interesting working with them. Just about done with the blocks, and it's been quite an experience learning how to do that. I've never done it before, but some things that I've learned is it's really important to get the consistency of the mortar correct. And I've just been using this Quick Creek Type 6 mortar. It's not very expensive, and it's easy to work with. It comes in 80 or 60 pound bags. And, and what I did is took a bucket, and uh, that had some lines in it and worked with the water content to make sure that it was consistent the same every time that it worked. Of course the temperature like today it affects it a little bit but if you get it too runny it won't stick. If you get it too dry it won't stick. You have to have it just right or you're going to have a lot of problems. So there's more than one way to do this but uh, this is what I found works for me. It's not too physically taxing and uh, so we just run it back and forth get some of that water down in there so I'm not splashing it all over the place. And if you hold the shovel here, bend up the knees and get straight with your work. And you can just turn it over. It's not too difficult. I try to use both sides a little bit so I'm not wearing myself out too bad. Just use a little momentum. Don't try to do this slow and turn it over. It just doesn't work. You've got to get after it. So you can see I've been using this board pretty wore off, but you want something that's pretty smooth. You can pick it up like this, don't be trying to go like this, it's too hard. Use your legs. It's not hot out, so you don't have to do anything with the mud, it'll be fine. If you lay a block down and you don't have mud past it, it's hard to get it like this. Now it's a new day, so we cleaned all that off at the end of the day. You see I'm not real good at this but if it's done the trick is to keep it consistent. So we're going to put the top layer on so I'm going six blocks high so I'm putting a bond beam there. I put a similar bond beam up about three layers high and what that does is it allows the, the concrete to flow sideways through the blocks and I put rebar in there to reinforce the wall. Everywhere I didn't have a vertical piece of rebar coming through, I put a piece of screen on there and mortared that in so when I ran concrete sideways it didn't go down the holes where there wasn't any vertical rebar. When I'm running the mortar onto the blocks is you can't be stingy with that mortar. You have to have enough on there otherwise you're fighting getting the, the, the blocks level. So you see the bomb beam has these slots cut in out of it so you can put the rebar here. Slide that baby on there. As I talked about earlier, you have to be pretty generous with this mud. Got to be careful not to tip it over too far or this all just fall off. So I need to grab this thing so I can pick it up and drop it in flat. Not drop it, just set it in. Make sure it's straight down here. And then I can take my hammer. tap it in. Usually start at one end and work this in. And now I'm just going to clean all this off. And if there's a gap here, I'll pull the string out of the way and work that in. And again, I have waterproof gloves on, so I just scrape it off with my fingers. is open all the way through and it doesn't have any holes. This is a little bit stronger and fill that full of concrete so we can put the anchor bolts in there.
Well, that's a wrap for video four. If you haven't subscribed, I appreciate you doing that. And that's a good way for you to keep updated on what we're doing in the next videos. And also on howtofarmandgarden.com, there's a lot of other information that you might be interested in. So please subscribe and hit that like button. Leave us a comment or a question and share if you can. All right, until next time.